I'm here in Cool Park Nature Reserve. I'm standing in a basin uh, of a turlock. Uh, they're called ephemeral lakes because they drain out when the rain stops, which is usually in the summer. And you can see there's a vegetation zonation here, um, different textures and colours, and the longest flooded is in the centre of the basin, and then the ones that flood for less time is up at the top of the edges of the grassland, and then even the trees are flooded maybe for one or two months in the year. And we're going to look at five plants which are typical of turlocks, they're not all unique to turlocks, but some of them really benefit from the open nature created by the flooding which keeps the trees at bay. This is a lovely patch of the fen violet, which is quite rare in Ireland. It's almost confined to turlocks and it benefits from the flooding which keeps the trees at bay because it's not a woodland species, it needs the light. Um, it's not grazed in this area, but it, the shallow soils, I think, means that the grasses are not overtopping it and it's in a mid-zone from the flood basin. It's got a very pale flower, which is very recognisable at a distance, um, a round-shaped flower, and at the back it has a spur, this green little spur where the nectar is held and it's quite short and green, which is also a characteristic of the fen violet. But one of the key things is the leaf. The leaves in other violets tend to be heart-shaped, but this has the heart-shaped base, but it's very much elongated, and it has this pointed tip to it. And you can see that even more over here where it's finished flowering. You can see the plants are beginning to even grow taller, uh, little seed pods here, and they've got these sickle-shaped leaves. So that's very typical of the fen violet, Viola stagnina. I'm here in roughly the same level as the, the fen violet in the Turlock Basin, the upper edges of the grassy flood zone. Um, and here, the backdrop of this aptly named silverweed is the northern bed straw, Galeum boreale. As its name, both names suggest, it's a northern species and it, it's, it doesn't occur much further south than here. And it's actually relatively uncommon in Ireland, though it does occur outside Turlocks in areas such as this, which are prone to flooding. Um, and drying out again. The bed straw family, uh, the Rubiaceae, is characterized by these whorls of leaves going up the stem. In the case of the, the northern bed straw, the leaves are quite flat, there's usually just four of them, and they've got a midrib which is very visible down the middle. Then there's a, a head of flowers which are actually quite scented. They have four or five petals and um, they can be pollinated by insects such as hoverflies. Um, so they're an attractive plant for, for their, their scent. I'm here down in the basin of the turlock. Turlocks are unusual in being vegetated because the water recedes in the dry season. Um, but sometimes in some turlocks, it, the water doesn't go down until quite late, like here, and it reveals just bare mud which then becomes rapidly colonized with the whole load of little annuals which have existed in the mud as seeds. And my favorite amongst these is this mudwort, Limacella aquatica, which is a protected species. It's very rare. The habitat's rare and the plant is rare. And it's got these little paddle-shaped leaves and tiny little white flowers in the middle, which may be pollinated by thrips, it may be self-pollinated. Um, but it also is very unusual in that for an annual, it actually has little stolons, little vegetative uh, shoots that run out. So presumably it tries to colonize as much as it can of the mud while it's still there. Well, I didn't have to go far. I'm still in the mud zone in the lowest part of the turlock and amongst the annuals. And there's this green traily little plant here, which is the narrow fruited water starwort. And this is very rare indeed. It's also protected uh, in, by Irish law. Um, it, was only, it was first found in Ireland in this turlock only about 10 years ago, but perhaps a bit more. And then it's turned up since in a number of turlocks. It's quite a turlock species and turlocks that have mud. Um, it's got these traily leaves, tiny little green flowers, um, but what you most distinctive about it when the fruits start to ripen in the axils of the leaves, it, it's a black, it's a dark brown black colour and that's a very distinctive characteristic of this plant. I'm here at Mullach Moor in the Burren National Park and behind me is Loch Yallon, which is actually a permanent lake, but the edge of it is floods like a turlock and it floods right up 
tr past me up to the road. So it, it comes and goes, same limestone pavement, same limey water. And in this area, we have the shrubby sink foil, Potentilla fruticosa, now Dasifora fruticosa. Some of you might recognize it because it's, uh, it, it's cultivated as cultivars that are grown in gardens, but this it is in its wild, in the wild, and it is a northern species. It's, it's very rare in Ireland. It occurs in and around here in Ballyvaughan and around Loch Corrib, and then in Britain, it's only in, in Teesdale area. The rest of the records are all garden escapes. So it's a shrub. It benefits from the flooding in that it keeps, again, trees. It doesn't grow under shade um, and it's tolerant of flooding. Uh, at some point, maybe two or three months in the year, it's going to be completely covered. And then at this time, it comes out with these five petal flowers, like a lot of the potentillas. They're yellow and they're, and they're quite simple, open rose type flowers.